And they're back. That was a little longer than I expected for a break, but that's okay. For the watching on YouTube or the VOD, uh, not too long. Lies, damn lies, and pirates. <laughs> Where men go as one, there is life, and where there is life, there is there is cause for hope. Our grandfather believed that, and so do I. But before we for forge ties with our friends in the Far East, we must first find a way to reach them. Onthod is not exactly over the river and through the woods. <clears throat> I am one step ahead of you, dear sister, or rather, Tataru is. But before we discuss that, there is another issue I wish to address. Much as I would like it if we would make it, We'll make this journey together. Someone will need to remain to serve as liaison to the Alliance and the Resistance during this critical period. Moreover, as your stola cannot be left unattended. Then I should obviously remain very well issue addressed. You know, Alphano, I would have been, been quicker just to ask and markedly less patronizing. <laughs> yes, I suppose, uh... Um, would you be willing to look after Yishtola and provide support to our involved and the others? Yes, Alphino, I would. You see? That wasn't so hard, was it? Enjoy your trip and don't you dare return with the grief. Oh, I would not dream of it. Rather than... Right then. Sister? Hesigos? Lies? Lies? Gather your things. We are... We are for Limsa Laminsa. Oh, hold on. I need to do something quickly here. Just some busy work. Train up my squadron. Tataro should be here any moment with our ship's captain. 
So we're going by sea after all. Is Merwood lending us our pick of the Crimson Fleet? Not exactly. You are right in as much as we were traveling in it by sea. Regrettably, it is simply not feasible for an airship to travel in such a distance without impossibly large fuel reserves to say nothing of the inevitability of running afoul of the, Imper the Empire's aerial defenses. But then it is equally infeasible to sail an Eosian vessel halfway around the world without the Empire taking notice. Which leaves us with only one other option. Oh, speak of the devil. So, to keep you waiting, may I present to you Captain Carvalan of the Kraken's Arm. The Kraken's Arms? Don't tell me we made a deal with pirates. Greetings and salutations, science. I take it from your comrade's tone that you no longer wish to be with our proposed arrangement. Not at all, Captain. Pray forgive my sister's her house, but she is... I've been one to speak her mind. I, on the other hand, am the very soul of discretion, as many well-respected personages may attend from the offices of the Admiral to the high houses of Ishgard. Ah, but where was I? Oh, yes. The science of the Seventh Hall do indeed still wish to you employ your services. However, it's important that you are aware of certain extenuating circumstances. And intent on securing passage to the Far East, you came to us knowing that to be the, be the proud purveyors of said region's finest spices. Would you steal from God's fearing merchants out on the high seas? Whatever privateering the Kraken's arms may or may not engage is strictly within the limits of the law as set forth by our indefigurable keeper of the peace. More to the point, we are pragmatic. Pragmatist, I see considerable risk in aiding your cause and a negligible profit. Well, I for one, one would think the captain has a point. The five seas can be extremely treacherous and many a poor unfortunate soul has to come to grief out, out there on the waves. Why, when... We were in Ishkad. I heard the t tragic tale of how the heir of House Derendar vanished at sea. Even now, nearly twenty years later, the poor Count remains convinced that his son still lives and would pay a sultan's ransom for news of his whereabouts. <laughs> Truly a tragedy for the ages, and a testament of the misfortunes that may befall us should we act without due consideration. But so long as you are able to abide the capricious whims of fate, I am willing to oblige you in this once. That said, in light of the recent rebellion, I trust you understand that I cannot deliver you to Doma itself. I can only take you as far as Kugane in Hingashi. You will require time. Time, we will require time to procure sufficient provisions to make ready for your departure. I humbly suggest you do the same. <laughs> okay, so I must say... Let's talk about this moment and Tataru, uh, Tataru's Tataru's blackmail <laughs> that she just did. You figure this out uh, during the quest for Ishgard Restoration. It's a side quest, not main quest. That's why you haven't seen it, seen it on the street. But there's a point in Ishgard Restoration where they're trying to solicit ventures from each of the city-states of Eorzea to provide representatives for uh, basically inter-city-state trade. Trade and open a shop in the new 
firmament uh, district of Ishgard, or the reconstructed uh, firmament uh, of Ishgard. To do that, Lord Derendare uh, joins us and and Francel as we travel the city states. We come here and when we go to solicit the uh, Kraken's arms to see if they would join in, which is Captain Carvelin is uh, the captain of the Kraken's arms, right? He <clears throat> strictly for stays hidden from Lord Derendere. We find out during that time that the captain is that missing son that Tataru is talking about. And that Car uh, Carvelaine does not want his dad to know <laughs> that he, who he is right now. Because he doesn't want to return to Ishgard. <laughs> but Tataru basically subtly <laughs> communicated to Carnival that she knows this and if we didn't didn't help the Scions he would tell he would provide this information to his father and he <laughs> which is something he does not want to do So, Tatari just blackmailed. <laughs> it's great. I love Tataru with all my heart. Ah, hug. Give her a blow kiss because I can't just do a regular kiss. There it is. Marvelous. She is. So good. So good. Suddenly, all those uh, hours the Tyro passed comforting and, and comparing in the Forgotten Night it seem, seem rather better spent, do they not? That said, I was in, had intended to press the point more obliquely, but while there was something disconcerting about the pleasure Tataru took in making Captain Coverlin squirm. Oh, how delightful. I say we should, should heed the captain's advice and attend to our own preparations while they're ready the vessel for departure. Tatara and I will procure the necessary supplies, Alize. I should be grateful if you use the time to brief Oriange on recent developments. You may also wish to review the relevant safety pr procedures in the event of an emergency at sea. How, how very prudent of you. Very well, I shall go and speak with him. What of Vesicus and Lise? I would like the two of you to return to Reverend's Toll and speak with our Doman allies. I fear we know too little about their home then, and any information they can provide uh, would be most welcome. When we have completed our respective tasks, we will reconvene here at the Fairy Docks. Great. Sounds like a plan. Let's go, Vesicus. Ravens Toll. Well, here we are. We'll need to talk to a, to lots of people, so I think we should split up. I'll ask around at the House of Splendors, and you take the Rising Stones. I'll meet you here after. Got it.
This is when those just talk to the guy to unlock stuff. This is basically unlocking some extreme trials. Okay, cool. Back to the MSQ. <clears throat> Back to Higiri. <clears throat> Greetings, Esco. What brings you to the toll to this day? And we want to know about Doma. But you are for Doma? Heavens. The signs have shown us not but kindness, but... Never in my wildest dreams I imagined they would fight for our homeland. For 25 years we suffered an eternity, and then we spied an opportunity the Emperor dead, Gardemal, and Kalia Chaos. It seemed the time was ripe. Beneath our Lord's banners we, did, we gathered and fought to reclaim our own nation. But when Xenos arrived in the 12th Legion, it was over in an instant. Hmm? What is it, my friend? You look as though you have something to ask. Yeah, can you tell me about Doma? That you go to join the Yigiri and Gutsetsu in the, in the fight it fills me with such joy. Ah, forgive my exuberance. You require information, yes. We of the Nagani clan have served Doma faithfully for generations. My ancestors held positions within Donut Castle, even. Now it is home to the Imperial Viceroy, which in her host of men in Magitech. They think that what was once the shining symbol of our heritage and the seat of dear Lord Cayenne has become a den of Gallian dogs. You are truly planning to travel to Doma. I do not know what to say. Forgive me. I shall aid you in the best of my ability. Oz is a beautiful land nestled in the east, on the eastern coast of Lanthard, along the banks of the One River. Our nation thrived and proud and free until the Guardians came 25 years ago. The river was our lifeblood, free to travel and to fish, but travel was soon restricted and now the river belongs to none. Give me. Oh, there you are. Learned anything interesting? The older domans I spoke with tried to teach me all about uh, Far Eastern customs and the importance of form formality and politeness. I'd like to think Eorzeans can can be just as stiff and stuffy as anyone, especially your guardians. But anyway, did you know that they <clears throat> eat with sticks? It wasn't all that hard, actually. Or at least that's why I saw it, until they told me I was holding them wrong. And then when I spoke with the younger domans, 
They just rolled their eyes and told me that I was all load of stupid old. Hmm. Wow. What you learned sounds a lot more useful. Unless someone invites us to dinner, of course. I hope they do. Right. No point waiting around here, is there? We should head back to Limps of the Minsa. Alphano said to meet at the ferry docks, I think. Your return, Discus. I trust you learned much from our domain friends in Revenant Stoll. I'm eager to hear all, though that can wait until we have left port. We will have enough time to talk on our journey to Cook and Army. Our spice trading friends have completed their preparations. Assuming you have completed yours, you may inform the deck end when you're ready to depart. All set, lad. I'll see you to the ship if so. be praised. Full sure was I that I had come too late. Rionge! Tell me you haven't come all this way just to see us off. <laughs> Nay, my lady. Ere you quit these shores for eastern climes, I wished to share some words of seeming import. Look ye where the sun doth rise. See crimson embers, darkening skies. Look ye where the sun doth fall. See azure lost amidst the squall. Well, that sounds suitably foreboding. Another one of your prophecies, I presume? Of far eastern origin, I. It is mine earnest hope that this ancient wisdom may serve to guide you on your journey. For what dangers lie in wait for you upon those distant shores are yet beyond my knowing. Oh, a parting gift befitting your roundabout ways. Thank you. I have more than words for you, my lady. It's beautiful. Is it for me? Though undeniably powerful, your ethereal blade taxeth you greatly in the wielding. Not so this rapier, which shall serve you just as well against all but the most formidable foe. Impressive. It feels as though it's attuned to my ether. I shall treasure it. Honored guests, say your farewells. For the moment of our parting draws nigh. A fair wind blows, and I mean to follow it. It would seem our ship is set to sail. Pray give my regards to Thancred and the others, and take care.
A fine day, is it not? Fair winds and following seas. The misery is enjoying herself. Nevertheless, it would not do for you to spend the entirety of our voyage above deck. Let me show you to your quarters. Not under normal circumstances. Captain! You need it on deck! Something queer's afoot. The winds died down, the waters went still, and all of a sudden, we were dragged off course. Dragged? By what? Can't rightly say, sir. But some of the lads are muttering about seeing things in the water. Things that shouldn't be there. Oh, for the love of... If you will excuse me a moment. Actually, might I persuade you to join me? Loath though I am to admit it, I have a bad feeling about this. <clears throat> odd, most odd. Well, do you have any idea what's going on? No, as the man said, despite the absence of wind and current, the mystery is somehow being pulled off course. Well, why not fire up the cerulean engines you have hidden below? An excellent suggestion based on knowledge you should not have. Alas, our engines appear to be malfunctioning for reasons that escape my engineers at present. I'm telling you, Captain, it's them things the lad saw. Things? I don't suppose I would convince you to attempt something more descriptive, an adjective, for example. See, well, superstitions and fairy tales, not, not more, but if you might, must know the things which you so... Reticent to name of the souls of deceased women said to lure sailors to their deaths. P -p -p Preposterous! Yes, indeed. If it is neither the sea nor the weather which is responsible, then it is probably a predatory entity of some sort, perhaps a siren of some such. For all we know, it could be a fellow spice trader employing magics to seize and plunder passing fetch. Regardless, we have but one recourse, to let the current take us where it will and deal with whatever we find there. What a thoroughly pragmag pragmatic suggestion. Oh, I'm, b I'm beginning to like you, girl. I assure you the feeling is not mutual. Once we have arrived at our destination, be it a vessel in then or something else, Lisa and I will remain with the ship to defend it in case of attack. Essegos, I believe you will be the ideal choice to venture forth and deal with the cause of our troubles. Yeah. Put something! And it is settled. I know not what awaits us, but it will rue the day if real the sin. Or, as I am wont to do when it comes to these type of situations, I'm probably going to tank, because it might just be faster Q. But, let's check. Engines. Corn blood. Uh, clear selection. Siren, Siren Song C. 12 minutes. Draw.
I'm 63, which definitely means I'm still overleveled, which is great. Based off of my current gear, which is 255, I'm... Uh, well, let's check. Let's check something here. No. Let's replace it. I've not gotten a shire set for my uh, take specs, so... Six minutes. Okay. Well, I don't like that. Insta Q. Oh, I guess I'm healing. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Once we get to Once we get to Shatterberg, it's gonna be much easier because of the trust system. Well, that didn't go so well.
Ah!
Yeah, it went smoothly. After all this,
Rồi Yay! Well, all right, I'm gonna take care of it. Good, repairs should be completed by the time you return to Nibia. I find this other human looks like a I swear, if I never hear another ghost story, it will be too soon.
And we continue our journey all the way across the continent. To the Isle Nation of Hingashi. Where they arrive at the port city of Kagane, the only ta space inside the Providence. And then opened outside it. The smell of the sea and the crash of the waves as we drew closer to Kugane. The only port open to outsiders in Hingashi, across the Ruby Sea from Othard, from Doma. All the colors of the rainbow, all the peoples of the world, all in one place. I wish you could have seen it. Nisa is our narrator for this journey. If you haven't figured that out. Uh, back to Monk. Congratulations, you now stand in Kagani, the western port of Fingashi, regrettably the only port in this nation open to foreign trade. Oh, and I do apologize for the unforeseen difficulties which befell us during our journey. Needless to say, your assistance in overcoming them was much appreciated. Incidentally speaking. Glad though I am to have arrived, I would remind you that all... Mind you all that we are far from home, with limited resources at our disposal. Duly noted, brother. I shall take care not to enjoy myself. In any event, Doma is our final destination. Our first order of business would be to secure passage there. Captain Carv Carvelin, uh, I... Realize you pledged only to take us as far as Kugani, and I would no desire to change the terms of our agreement. I should, however, be interested to know how you would go about reaching Anthard, were you in my position. At the risk of seeing the obvious, you are in a port. Surely there is a kind and generous soul here who are willing to aid you for the right price. You cannot be the first traveler seeking passage to Doma. Captain makes a point. Does like... That Higeri and Gotsetsu were forced to come here for the self-same reasons we were. They must have found their way, found a way to Antha, assuming they are not still in the city. Hmm. Hey, we seek package. Mayhap we first should first seek our friends. Leave it to me, Alphino. Making friendly inquiries is my specialty. Lest you forget, I got plenty of practice in Nishgard. Captain Carvelain, would you direct me to the nearest tavern? Desperate for a drink, are we? You may find one in that large building just beyond the pier. Whether your journeys have come to an end or are about to begin, the, the Shiokaze hostelry is a ideal place to rest, relax, and reflect. Or so they say. With that, my dear scions, I bid you farewell. As soon as we have replenished our supplies, we must away. Also... Ours was ever a fast-moving business. The spice trade, you mean? But of course, should you not think I traveled halfway across the world and delivered you to the, your destination solely out of the kindness of my heart? Perish the thought. Thank you, Captain, and may the navigator watch over you and keep you. Right then, to the distillery. After you.
titles are kind of remarkable. But this, we are certainly not in Eorzea anymore. <laughs> a tavern is a tavern, Alphano, here or anywhere else. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time to do what I do best. Oh, a thousand pardons, my lady. The signs of the seventh dawn, I presume. I hope your voyage was not too trying. And you are... Ah, yes, of course. Forgive me. <laughs> Hancock of the East Aldenard Trading Company, at your service. On behalf of Chairman Lollorito, I bid you welcome to Kugani and invite you to take refreshments at our local offices. Lollorito? I was aware his interests extended beyond the borders of Eorzea, but not so far as Kagane. Regardless, I am disinclined to accept the hospitality of grinning merchants, especially those who serve a master with whom we have such a difficult relationship. My, such <laughs> naked suspicion. I do hope that business with the Crystal Braves did not rob you of all faith in your fellow man. Or do you really think the Chairman is plotting to drag you into another one of his grand schemes? I beg your pardon. If you are trying to win my trust, you are failing quite spectacularly. Oh dear, have I offended you? Once again, I must apologize. Too much time in the Far East, you see. One is compelled to talk in circles round everything here, and one finds oneself longing for the invigoratingly candid speech of the Uldan markets. Though I see now that this was neither the time nor the place to indulge said longing. Might I suggest that we continue this conversation at the company offices? Too many eyes and ears here, you understand. It would be decidedly reckless to say any more. If I may favor you with the invigorating candy you apparently crave, it would be decidedly reckless to follow a man I neither know nor trust. Give me one good reason why we should accept Lord Lollorito's invitation. Now there's the young diplomat I was told to expect. Very well then. I shall explain. You understand that you are come to a most reclusive and secretive nation, yes? One whose borders are close to foreign trade, save at this single port. Then it should come as no surprise that a great many parties have vested interests here. Merchants like myself are a given, of course, but for every one of us, you may be certain there is also an agent of a foreign government. Many notable nations and empires have embassies here, you know, including, of course, the Garlean Empire, with whom you have such a difficult relationship. To paraphrase, Kugani is teeming with Imperial spies, one or several of whom could now be listening to our every word. Something to that effect, yes. Beneath this veneer of bustling trade, a war for supremacy is being waged between world powers. One might say we were standing on the front lines, just not in public. I still have my doubts, but he may have a point. I say we accept his invitation for now. to me the mere mention of these on uh, trading company is enough to i'm fine truly you need not worry you must be as a ghost wind small slayer of gods rider of dragons savior of ishgard stealer of pants do some of the more puzzling rumors be believed i knew it may i say say that an honor and and pleasure it is to make your acquaintance, good sir. I just know you and I are going to get along famously. Now then, without further ado, allow me to escort you to the company offices. This being your first visit to our fair city, I shall make an effort to point out various landmarks along the way, if you would be so good to follow me. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Backtrack. This being one of the big cities.
There's an Ethernet network. I'll probably rarely ever say Ether as everybody else says it. I will say Aether because there's an A at the beginning. There is also this sightseeing point. How anybody gets up to that sightseeing point, I have no idea. Everyone, if I could have your attention, please. You are now standing at Tin Tinkanto. Encanto. Lucy Transcend the name means Spire of Drifting Souls, which, as some of you may have deduced, makes reference to the Aetherite, which stands over yonder. Hmm. The design is markedly different than those of Shaolin. Yet, yet I trust its function is identical. A diplomat and a scholar. Well, the wonders never cease. Far Eastern Aetherite technologies have long in stored tradition. I assure you this particular example was constructed by the Onishishu. Mm -hmm. Onishishu, a collective of skilled craftsmen who guard their uh, ancestral techniques with the utmost secrecy. In short, you will find it no less reliable in, than its Western counterparts. Attune if you like. I just got enhanced tackle. It's so nice. I have two charges of tackle. I love it. There we are. That's nice. Beautiful though it may be, we cannot stand all day, day staring at the Aetherite. Come, come, let us move along. The markets are next. Do you know, know how I was, I was mentioning before about the whole racial racial things about looks and everything? This is this is a Hrothgar. What does it look like? It looks like a man with the lion head. But of course, they tend to also kind of have more slumped looks, but it's still a man <laughs> with a lion head. They just slump. Oh, there it is. We have arrived at the largest shopping district in Kugane, Kugane Dori. Bring down the volume. Kugane, as you have doubtlessly un unaware, is an ancient Hingan word for gold. Though in its prosperous port, where golden fortunes are made, lesser fortunes, or Kugane, Kogane, are earned by the local merchants. It is all quite logical once you, once you learn the language. <laughs> now you're beginning to speak my language. Oh, ho, a kindred spirit! What pleasure it is to meet a young lady who appreciates the value of hard-won coin. Hancock of the East Alden Oil Trading Company? You are with clients today? Why, isn't it Master Kai Ten? Pray allow me to introduce you to my esteemed guests, but recently come from distant Deosia. This kind and generous soul supervises all transactions here in Kogani Dori. Mm, your sincerest and most appreciated. As he says, I am Kai Ten of the uh, Hakuuchi clan, and it is my honor to serve as overseers of this market. 
As we receive many foreign visitors to Gugani, we accept all manner of currencies. Rest assured, your Aeosian Gil are welcome here. I invite you to peruse our wares at your leisure. Arms, armor, foodstuffs, potables. Here you will find all of them and more. If you may pause here for a moment. This road leads to the Injun Gai, the district in which Injun or foreigners are permitted to reside. Will this also be where the foreign embassies are found, uh, including that of a certain empire? Precisely. So you see, it would not be so unusual to cross paths with one of their Garlean cousins. Your Garlean cousins here. With all this in mind, I would encourage you to choose your words carefully. You would not want any physical altercations after all. But spats, spats being strictly forbidden. The Seki Segumi punishes breaches of the peace quite severely. I have seen foreigners permanently exiled for a single violation. Though to be fair, this is not common. More often than not, they are executed on the spot. What? Cut down then and there? You're joking, right? Would that I were, but alas, these samurai, samurai are a humanless lot. Why, I recall one instance when a foreign merchant in, in his subs dared lay hands upon an Hingan aristocrat in front of the Sekisigumi. The samurai cut him in half with a single stroke. Ugh, I don't even want to think about that. So, as you see, it must behoove you to behave. But failing that, you may be, we may be forced to part ways with one another, or you, or you with yourselves, in the matter of the late Heleji Agileji. <laughs> Oh, how I amuse myself, but we must carry on. I have yet to show you the Gallian consulate. <laughs> what? Oh, what the, that was awkward. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, there's a nice little Ethernet shard here. Oh, this is the Thavnerian. Talk to this guy, just curious. Yes, this is the Thavnerian consulate. No, you may not enter without official business. What's to say? Well, hi, fellas. How are you? That's close enough, savage. This, as you may have surmised, is the consulate of you-know-who. Mark the guards at the gate. Well, are their uniforms not different from those you have seen in the West? Were you to travel far and wide, you might find that many such variations exist. Mm often inspired by local designs, all of which which goes to show that even a massive empire rule, seeking to rule all of creation is not without its artisans.
There is oh so much more that I could speak of. The soothing waters of the onsen, the ethereal eth delights of the pleasure district. But you are doubtless still weary from your long sea voyage. Let us retire to the company offices. At long last, we have arrived at our destination. May I present to you our humble offices. We have much to discuss, so I will refrain from further prattle. Come, come, right this way. I think this is voiceover. Thaumaturgists took great pains to ward these walls against all manner of surveillance. Where business dealings are concerned, we do not compromise on confidentiality. You may avail yourselves of these offices for the duration of your visit. Come and go as you like, and know that you may speak freely here. Your offer is most generous, but I will not enter into any agreement which would leave us beholden to you or your master. A legitimate concern? Allow me to clarify, then. The chairman bids you consider this as an expression of his heartfelt contrition for the bloody banquet and the unpleasantness which followed. Never having been one to put stock in words alone, the chairman deems the provision of material aid to be a more appropriate demonstration of his sincerity. By sheer coincidence, your purpose here also happens to coincide with our own interests. That is, assuming you are come to aid the Doman Liberation Front. How could... Hm. I will not bother to offer a denial. I, you have the right of it. To be specific, we are come in search of our Far Eastern allies, Yugiri and Gosetsu, whom we hope to assist in their fight. The Aori Shinobi and the Rugadin Samurai? Then you will be pleased to know that they have both come to Kugani. Are you sure? Quite. They came here aboard a company vessel, you see. However, they encountered difficulties securing passage across the Ruby Sea. The Ruby Sea? Sorry, I've never been any good at geography. Forgive me. This calls for a map. We are here in Kugani, the sole open port of Hingashi, situated on her western coast. Doma, meanwhile, is here on the eastern coast of Othard in Yansha. Therefore, if your friends are to reach Doma, they must first cross the Ruby Sea. Alas, this is easier said than done, as the Ruby Sea does not fall within the dominion of either Hingashi or Doma, being controlled since antiquity by a third party, namely the Confederacy. Said maritime collective is known for the consummate skill of its sailors and for demanding that any vessel entering its waters pay a toll referred to as the Ruby Tithe. 
In exchange, the Confederacy's vast fleet guarantees the safety of those who travel within its territory. Now, as I'm sure you are aware, Garlemald conquered Doma some 25 years past, at which time the Empire saw no value in controlling the Ruby Sea. And thus did they turn a blind eye to the activities of the Confederacy. The recently appointed acting Imperial Viceroy of Doma had other ideas, however. She has formally condemned the Confederacy and declared that any who recognize their authority shall be branded enemies of the Empire. Bowing to this pressure, Hingashi severed ties with these toll-takers and forbade the payment of the Ruby Tithe, prompting the Confederacy to make it known that any merchants choosing to sail the Ruby Sea would do so at their peril. No wonder they struggled to secure passage to Doma. What captain would risk such a journey given the circumstances? I am told your friends were not so easily deterred from their course, but I know not whether their persistence bore fruit. I say we follow in Yugiri and Gosetsu's footsteps and attempt to secure passage to Doma for ourselves. We will need to cross the sea in any case, and we may learn something of their whereabouts in the process. And should we find that they are still in Kagane, we can make the journey together. In that case, I have some information which may be of use to you. No quid pro quo, I assure you. The chairman was most insistent that I aid you to the best of my ability. You still have that cheeky grin. Though I'm reluctant to take any action whatsoever that could, that could be construed as placing ourselves in Lord Dorito's debt, we must avail ourselves of what means are available. Our Alamiga allies place their faith in us, and I do not intend to disappoint them. It would most seem inefficient for us all to venture out uh, together in search of information on Yugiri and Gosetsu's whereabouts. Agreed? Agreed. We need to cast our net water, split up and pursue all available avenues of inquiry. And if we're to coordinate our efforts efficiently, we'll need to establish a working base of operations here. Indeed. Tataru would seem best suited to be the task of organizing our supplies and procuring new ones. While she tends to that, we four begin our search by questioning the individuals Hancock identified. Alize and I will, will take those in the southern districts in the city, and the two of you can take the, those in the north. In uh, anticipation of just such an eventuality, I took the liberty of preparing some a few sketches of Yugiri and Gosetsu during our voyage. So here's my thought. I feel like these were um, uh, concept sketches that were made in the the uh, uh, while they were making these. It's like and then they were like, "Hey, let's put them in game because they would work." Wow, you still don't warn me that you're a bit of an artist, but. These are great. I'll definitely come in handy. Looks like you and me, Yesigos. Let's step outside and talk about where to start. Wow, Alphano sketches are so, I don't know how to put it, but they're very, well, see for yourself.
looks more like them than they do. Honestly, he could make a living doing this. Oh, sorry, no time for distractions. Why don't you we start by visiting Kakaru in the on something Asun Ansan Onsen. That was it. Onsen. Osen. Okay, so we did get the Aetherite. We got the this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I don't think we got this one. I'm going to backtrack. Because whenever you're in a new city, when you're one of the first things you should always do is attune to everything. I just want to see something here. Heads tackle. So oh, nice. Oh, 66 was the thing, so we'll get reroll fire, fire then. Oh, I could probably use, have used the Aetherite shard to get back here. That's all right. Oh, and passes these gates without the express permission of the magistrate. Be yeah, no way. This is the second Segumi Barracks. Eric, see that you equate yourself with propriety. Welcome to Daitenta, purveyor of the finest silks and garments in Kagani. Our name is taken from Daitenzen, the mightiest peak in Hingashi, and symbolizes our unwavering resolve to achieve the absolute height of elegance and fashion. Master Kayame uh, recently took over the business for her dear father and has made it personal mission to uphold the proud tradition of Daitenya name, which also introduced worldly fashions befitting our modern age. You tuned yourself to all the Ethernet shards in Kugane. 
It doesn't give me anything uh, extra. Uh, come on, come on, burns, cuts, cuts, embarrassing rashes. There's not that the mystical waters of the Bokaisen the hot springs cannot heal. Oh, what is that in your hand? Ah, you seek this aura and this Rogadin, do you? A thousand apologies, but I cannot help you. It is against our policy to divulge information regarding our patrons' past or present. Please, we came all this way from Eorzea to find our friends. I have, we have our reputation to consider, sir. Miss, men and women of all walks of life come here in search of rejuvenation, body and soul. They seek privacy and discretion, and we have ever honored their wishes. Only the Sekisegumi may demand otherwise. I'm sorry, but there is not I can do. I suppose we'll have to ask someone else then. What about that woman who runs the hostillery? Koto Kotokase, was it? Welcome, traveler. May I interest you in some rice wine? Expe exceptional quality delivered by the other day. Ah, now Ray Shinobi and the Rogadin Samurai. If I may, may I would answer your question with only a few of my own. If I speak of that which you, you know, engine, well, of what you know, engine, maybe. If I speak of, of that which you know, engine, be not offended. We are familiar with the situation in the lands across the Ruby Sea, the Doom Rebellion, after two and a half decades of quiet. I see, and you are familiar with the ways of Hingashi. How we elect to stand apart and support no cause but our own. Own indifferent and callous, as some may call us, but pragmatism is essential in a humble island nation such as ours to survive. And we are not fools. Complete isolation is impractical. And so Kugane is open to Injin, and we are equally hospitable to all. Or if I must speak more plainly, yes, I can help you. But if I do, I must also oblige the ones who ask about after you. Are you willing to accept this fair and equitable treatment? If anyone comes looking for us, tell them whatever you like. As you wish. The two individuals for whom you speak did indeed come here. They have sought passage across the Ruby Sea. Few ships are willing to take make the trip at the moment. Nevertheless, I made several introductions on their behalf. That was the intent of our interaction. I'll provide you with the names of the captains if you like. You've been a great help, Mistress Kotokase. Yeah, I'll be sure to come back for wine sometime. You would, you would welcome your custom. To question those captains as soon as we can. We take the first three. I'll take the rest. We'll meet there. We'll meet here when we're finished. All right. Good luck.
Passengers? No, we no longer offer that service. Too much trouble. Now we only transport goods. I told this to the samurai and sent him on his way. The woman? Pa. If it was a woman you seek, the pleasure houses had plenty. Yes, a rugged gentleman did approach me. He wanted to charter a ship to take him across the Ruby Sea, the bad devil. I sent him away, like all the others before him. The woman? Nay, I know her not. You ask me if I've seen this Ari woman in this Rogadin samurai? Hmm, the woman is unknown to me, but the man is not. He was for Doma, but I could not help him. He travels slowly between here and... We travel slowly between here and Ratsahan. It would be an unresistible detour. How did it? Oh, never mind. Judging from the look in your face, how did it? You, you didn't have much better luck than I did. Well, I suppose we might as well head back to. Wait, just remembered. There was someone on my list I I forgot to visit. Gyodo. He's a Namazu fi Namazu fisherman. Whatever that means, and a regular here. Maybe we'll find him if we look around. What? What? Why do you stare? You have business with me? By the twelve, a talking fish. Yes, yes, a talking fish. How very observant of you, Injun. You find me in good spirits, so your rudeness will I will ignore this once. But only if you address me by, again in the proper manner. Sorry, I've never met a... Let's start again. You're Gy Gyodo, right? My name is Lise, and this is Essegos. We're looking for some friends of ours. I see, I see. Both of these ones I know, know well. I helped them secure patches across the Ruby Sea. Really? That's wonderful. Could you do the same for us? Yes, yes, that would be no problem. For you, I would charter a ship this very day. But the journey is fraught with such much peril. The fare will not be cheap, and you are sure you can afford to pay. I didn't think to bring any money, but surely Tataru will let us take whatever we need for the science coffers, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know about that. You wouldn't be the only passengers, though. Could you take a moment to talk it over with our friends? Yes, yes, but hurry, the ship must depart under cover of darkness. We shall meet again at sunset at the Tasugari Bridge. Do not forget your fare. Bring many gill, yes.
It's about time our luck changed. Alphano and the others would be thrilled. That that wasn't too easy. That wasn't too easy at all. This is not showing some sort of trap or anything. I don't trust that fish person. The Mazu. We spoke with a number of merchants and captains at the Southern Piers. There is several recognized Gosetsu and confirmed that he had been searching for a vessel to de deliver him to Anthar. None, however, had any mention of Lady Yagiri. Yes, I had the same story for us. And then we you'll never believe what happened. We encountered somebody who's going to lead us into a trap. So this Gyoto claims to be as aided Gosetsu and Yagiri. How fortuitous. Not the word I would have chosen, Master Alphano. Stupid's what I call it. How can we agree to this price without making any attempt to haggle, or even confirm that what it was in the first place? Yes, that too was a misstep on their part, but it is not what troubles me most. Yodo and his brethren are not renowned for their generosity of spirit. Rather, they are disdained by scheming money lenders, ever eager to turn a profit for others' misfortune. Everyone else we questioned stated that Gosetsu was alone. Only Gyodo claims to have met both him and Yuri. I suppose it's just possible that Gosetsu made inquiries by himself and only upon only called upon Yuguri once he found a wooden captain. But it is equally possible, if not more likely, that that you are being deceived. Do not forget that the there are parties pr present in Kagane with the, with agendas which may run contrary to your own. Royce Ray uh, was once a spy herself, as I recall. would be surprised if she did not have countless agents here in her employ, all eager to prove themselves and to her, their new master. And what better way to do so than by delivering her the heads of foreign intelligence? Fine, we may not may be right about him, but if Gyodo is working for the Empire. Who's to say he didn't try the same trick with Yigiri and Gosetsu? I mean, if he did, he might know where they are, and if he's succeeded, he may be in trouble. Anyway, if we hold up the up his end, he holds up his end of the bargain. We have nothing to worry about, will he? But if he tries to betray us, I vote we take him prisoner and punch him till he tells us the truth. So, if it's a trap, we'll spring it and deal with the consequences. Hmm. I like the way you think. Very well. You should prepare for the worst. Tatara will remain here, and I shall follow the three of you at a discreet distance. Once more, I must caution you to avoid physical altercations at any cost. Even should Imperial agents attempt to engage you, the Sekisigumi will not hesitate to clap you in irons. I'll cut you down. Anything untoward would happen, you are to return here at once. Is that clear? To review, Lise Esagos and I will meet with Gyodo as planned. Alphano will keep watch from a distance, ready to provide support in the likely event that Gyodo attempts to betray us to the Imperials or whomever else. Should that happen, you and Lise will subdue him, and together we will make our escape. As our actions may draw attention from the Sekisagumi, we will evade them with Alphano's assistance and return here with our prisoner. Does that meet with everyone's approval? Of course, these precautions will be for naught if Gyodo does not play us for fools. But we shall see. To the bridge.
And conveniently, it's starting to become night in Kugane. Because it's 6 p.m. Eorzean time. Oh, and the weather, the weather is foggy, so that's one of the reasons. <sighs> anyway, it's time for a duty. Our would-be allies, nowhere to be seen. Make ready, Eskos. Something smells fishy. And I can sink three levels down. I want to enhance tackle for me. And most sincere apologies to you and yours, yes, yes. This way, this way, quickly now. Where are you taking us? Where is the ship? This ship, this ship. So very sorry to inform you, yes, yes. Long before was it pledged to another. To me, to me, these ones are for Doma. I knew it couldn't be this simple. Nothing personal, yes, yes. Just business. Then business is about to take a turn for the worse. Ah! Come on, let's find a way out of here. As expected, the second signal. I can turn it down. They have caught our sense. Since fighting them is out of the question, we have to wind our way back to to the Ruby Bazaar, evading their patrols as we go. If they find you, use these smoke bombs to make your escape.
All right, so it doesn't want me to go that way. Come with me, I'll guide you to your friends. All right. First a talking fish, now a tortoise. Uh, what have we got to lose? I think the 12 you found... You made it. Things going to be all right. Trust me. Seek four foreigners, one a brutish woman carrying an unconscious Namazoo. Have you seen them? Four foreigners, you say? Ah, yes! Very rude they were, making no apology as they barged past. If they went back to... I see. Many thanks, good sir. With me, they cannot have gone far. All is well. The Seki Sin Gumi will not return this way for some time, I should think. You are of the East Aldenar Trading Company, yes? Come with me. I know a safer way. Returned, and with gifts, I see. Our meeting went about as well as expected. We've brought the Namazu who sought to betray us. When he wakes up, we'll see what he knows about the Jiri and Gazetsu. Well done, you. When I saw the Sekisegumi out in force, I did begin to worry, but I see my fears were misplaced. Actually, if it weren't for Soroban, we might not have gotten away. Twas my pleasure. Yet I must ask, Soroban, why would you deceive the Sekisegumi to help us, foreigners of whom you know naught? Why, out of the kindness of my heart, is what I would like to say, but my motives are not so sure. I chanced to witness your meeting with Hancock at the tavern, and 
saw an opportunity. An opportunity? Like many, I came to Kugane as a trader to make my fortune. Kojin of the Red may serve the Empire as mercenaries, but Kojin of the Blue walk a different path. Regretfully, most here would rather not meet our gaze, much less do business. So I seek the custom of those less predisposed to dismiss it outright, namely the East Aldenard Trading Company. Quid pro quo, is it? Well, there is no denying that we owe you a debt. What say you, Hancock? Will you consider doing business with our entrepreneurial friend here? Rest assured, Master Sodoban, that in matters of trade, the company does not discriminate. We would be honored to hear your proposal. I promise you will not regret this, good sir. Ah, yes. You sought passage across the Ruby Sea, did you not? I have a ship with you. <laughs> you do? Well then, far be it from us to refuse. You have our deepest thanks. And you mine. Basically, he needed somebody to give him an introduction to the East Aldenar Trading Company. Oh, forgot to turn up the value for the, the VO, but that's okay, it's fine. Still annoyed he tried to deceive us, but at least we were prepared for it. Even so, next time we should probably try to avoid running around Kugane in the middle of the night without the city yard snapping at our heels. Right then. Kyoto should be coming around soon. I think it's time we had a little chat, don't you? Probably more VO. Rise and shine, little fishy. Nope, guess not. No VO. I know you can hear me, so stop pretending to be asleep and I'll give you or I'll give you another ride on my boot. No, 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 no more boots. All my secrets are yours for the asking. Tell us what you know about Yuguri and Gosetsu. Every last detail. And if I find out later that you lied to me. No, no, no more lies. The clear untarnished truth. You have my word. Only the samurai did I meet. Yes, yes, only him. He asked after a ship, so I provided an introduction to, to the Garleans. You mean you led him into a trap as you did us, because you are an Imperial spy? No, no, I'm no spy. I just, I, it was just business. Fewer ships pass through Kukagani these days, and we have struggled to make ends meet. So when the Garleans offered a bounty for any domains found in Kugane. Oh, my mistake, you're not a spy, just a common cutthroat. Not that I'm surprised. You need half a brain to be a spy. What happened to the samurai? Such a cruel, vicious tongue you have. He would not go quietly, no, no. Blades were drawn, men were cut down, and the Sekisugumi came. He took the samurai away. Hold on a moment. You mean to tell me the engine they arrested the other day was Gosetsu? Oh... Had I known if he was in the custody of the second Sigumi, I need only see if see to it that the requisite funds find their way into the right official's hands and your friends will walk free. As it is in Ilda, so it is in Kugane. But given the circumstances, it seems we have no choice but to resort to morally questionable means. Uh, we'll make a practice. We'll make a pragmatist of you yet, Master Alphineo. We're free to wait here while I speak with the relevant official, but if you would rather wait for Gosetsu outside the barracks, you can go we can go together. 
I wanted past the Imperials to try something again, so mayhap it would be best if Lee Sesagos and I joined you. All right, and what about Giordo? I will keep an eye on him for the time being. We can release him after you return with Gosetsu. He'd be doubtless have some choice words to say to the little fellow. Sorbonne, mayhap I would be prudent to prepare your ship for our immediate departure. As you wish. Everything is in order, then let us be off. The Sikasegumi barracks are to the north. I know, I stopped by there earlier. Unless I sit you wait here, you may be assured that this will not take long. I'm turning it up for reasons. Is it really going to be as simple as he says, do you think? Hmm. You said it wouldn't take long, right? Because this feels a bit long to me. Calm down, Lise. Everything is going to be all right. Much as I hate to admit it, I share Hancock's dim view of government officials and their supposed incorruptibility. From what I've gleaned from the Far East, they're probably exchanging lengthy pe pleasantries. There seems to be a correct way to do everything here. Bribery being no exception. I say we leave them to it. Artesicos? Right, right. Everything's fine. Probably. I mean, it couldn't be as bad as the last time we stood around waiting for something to happen. And cutscene. <laughs> Is the three most impulsive and impatient... Ones that are waiting for Hancock. Just standing around doing nothing. I just want you to, to, to look at this. Of the signs that are on this trip. The three most impulsive and impatient ones. Are standing outside the second Sigumi barracks doing nothing. And then we hear you get go get Ketsu. They have at you. Ah. was Gazetsu. I'm sure of it. He's in trouble. Lise, wait! I suppose we should follow her then. Victory to the samurai! <laughs> How many is that now? Ten in a row! Kazetsu! Oh! This is a surprise! What in blue blazes are you three doing here? I could ask you the same thing. We've been looking all over for you, and then I suddenly heard you screaming. It would seem there has been a misunderstanding. Allow me to explain. So, in summary, you started a brawl with some off-duty Imperial soldiers and were subsequently arrested by the Sekisigumi, whom you somehow befriended and convinced to set you free if you could defeat a given number of them in single combat. 
ten bouts for my freedom, aye. Tis but a pity you came too late to witness the last one. And with that, I'm free to go, yes? Our word once given may not be broken, but we pray you make every effort to avoid future altercations. Circumstances notwithstanding, my lord, we are honored and grateful to have witnessed firsthand the skill of a Doma Samurai. Ah. And we had just concluded negotiations. I gather my assistance was not required. <laughs> we didn't know. I must apologize that you endured such trials and tribulations in search of me. There is no need for that. You had no way of knowing we would become looking for you. We're after a ship to take you to Doma, yes? It so happens we have a willing captain. Truly? What fortune! We will tell you all about it back at the company offices. Alphano and Tataru are waiting for us there. Just curious. Nope. Well, nothing. Alright. Setsu, thank the twelve you are unharmed. As you can see, Master Alphado, I am the very picture of health. You vile fiend. Malevolent trickster. How, how kind the Kami are to grant me vengeance so soon. But first I demand you to return the coin you so vigorously embezzled from me. You have every right to be angry, good sir. Uh, 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 gladly, though, I return to you your coin, but I had been forced to repay certain gambling debts beforehand. Uh, setting that matter aside for the moment, where's Lady Yuri? Was she not traveling with you? For a time, I, but we parted ways some time ago, the better to improve our chances of finding Lord Hien. Lord Hien? Forgive me, I have yet to explain. Lord Hien is the heir to, Doma, to Doma's throne and our master. He was a passionate voice on their cause, for the cause of the Doman liberation, and when we learned of the Empire's, Emperor's death, it only grew louder. So you seized every opportunity and rose up to reclaim your freedom, only for your hopes to be dashed when Xenos led his army into your lands. The Crown Prince was a merciless foe. Against him and the might of the Twelfth, we had no chance. Once Lord Hien understood this, he bade Yogiri take to the sea with as many of our people as possible. He, however, would stand and fight, and that they might have more time to escape. I remained by his side as well, and together we carried on our doomed war. Then one day, in a fierce battle, we were separated. We knew not what came became of him only that he was beyond the Empire's reach, and that to find him I would need Yugiri's aid. The situation grows more perilous by the day, for the new Viceroy, Yotsio, 
is a black-hearted villainess who delights in the torment of our people. There is not she would do, she would not do to further her pursuit of Lord Yen. Thank you. I believe that makes matters a good deal clear. It would please you to learn that we have come to we are come to aid the Doman Liberation Front to resuming their efforts to overthrow their imperial presses. Then allow me to join you. My inquiry is here, born of fruit, hence my desire to return to Anfarn. Once there, I will lead you to our headquarters in Gengsha, where we shall all be reunited with Yugiri. Mayhap not all, Alphino's talents may seem better applied here in Kagane, working closely with Tataru and Hancock to feed us intelligence. There is a Guardian embassy just down the road, after all. While I appreciate the vote of confidence, I'd be glad to accompany you all. As a soldier in the field, so to speak. Come now, brother. A competent commander uh, assigns his soldiers the task best suited for them. As you of all people should know, and you are so very good at espionage and intrigue. For, for we all must serve each in our own way. Very well. I would see my place is here. Pat, pat. <laughs> Sorbonne is waiting at the pier. Have fun, you lot. Mm. Pier 1, Pier 2, Pier 2, which is by the thing. <sighs> oh, why do I keep yawning? I have been waiting for you, my friends. All preparations have been completed, and my ship awaits your, uh, its passengers. But we depart without further delay. If you assist with me, everyone, the Ruby Sea awaits. And I think we do have some VO. Think? Maybe? Possibly, we'll find out in a second. Remember the water, how it turned crimson in the morning sun. A shimmering sea of rubies stretching from horizon to horizon. You could almost believe it went on forever. But beyond that red expanse lay a land in turmoil. On the shores of Othard, our Doman brothers struggled in vain. I mean, I get to the first uh, Ruby Sea uh, Aetherite, and then I think we'll call it for the evening. How wide and beautiful she is, the Ruby Sea, filled with promises and adventures and treasures. Many wonderful treasures.
Now, in order to reach the shores of Altar, you will need to cross the resplendent waters you see before you. However, it is easier said than done. To set forth without uh, making the necessary preparations is to invite the Confederacy to claim your vessel and your life should you resist. With this fate to be, be avoided by paying the ruby tide, thereby earning you the blessing of the pirate lords. So, let us go and greet them. Our destination is the Isle to the West. It doesn't look very far from me. Eskos, why don't we jump in and swim, swim to it? I've had my fill of boats. Hmm, an excellent idea. I think you should find the water to your liking. I will use my ship to deliver these less those less inclined to the isle. Right, this should be easy, and a good way to loosen up both of before the next fight, whenever it comes. 20 gil says, I beat you there. Hey, I got small arms! This is no fair! Ah, there you are. I trust you enjoyed yourselves. Follow me, my friends. The one with whom you must speak is a man named Tan Sui. Is that uh, rugged and samurai, which I keep running into? <laughs> Don't forget you can mount. <laughs> I fear you have the vantage of me. Most honorable and esteemed Desicus Winsmall, I am Tensui, a humble mate who serves the pleasure of the Confederacy's captain. As you are in the company of the Shellback, I presume you have business to discuss. Wish to pay the ruby tie? Yes. With your gill, perhaps? Just as well. Foreign currencies are in demand these days. I would pay for their passage to Antar. Does this sum meet with your satisfaction? The sea is quite tempestuous of late. Tempestuous of late. I cannot say for confidence that you would reach your destination safely unless you tripled it. D -d do you take me to a fool? I know the price, as do all. Alas, you live in interesting times. As you ca came from Kugane, I would think I need not tell you that. The shadow of war looms. The wise and the cautious shook our waters and our custom. The foolhardy sharpen their knives in anticipation. Meaning? So, so, we've got to come quickly. The bastards are at it again. I tried to convince them to stop, but they weren't having it. Very well, I'll be there shortly. Hmm, proposition. Your comments strike me as a worthwhile investment. I would not hear, hear men name me a cat before Coburn, so I shall consider their tithe paid, not for what they have done, but for what I expect they will do. I'm not so sure what to make of that man, but at least the matter of our tithe is settled. For now. What was that he and the other pirates were talking about? Maybe we ought to go take a look.
Gentlemen, I'm told you were most unreceptive to my associate's request. I realize you do not look kindly on the Confederacy and her ways, but if you refuse to pay the ruby tithe, <laughs> your safety in these waters cannot be assured. Spare me your concern, pirate. Your feeble attempts at extortion will not work on us. You remain at large because we allow it. Because you are such insignificant little pests that we see no need to swat you. But if you wish to risk the ire of the Viceroy, by all means, fire upon an Imperial vessel. Give us a reason to bring the full might of the Galian Empire to bear against your pathetic fleet. Bastards! Gentlemen, surely the fact that you have such limitless resources at your disposal gives you all the more reason to spare some few coins for the less fortunate. All talk, just as I thought. Come, let us away. I have no time for this rubbish. Same to them, aren't we? Savages to be ruled or slaughtered. They've always balked at paying the ruby tithe, but they were never so eager to pick a fight. The problem, you see, is that many of my comrades in the Confederacy are of Doman descent, and the acting Viceroy, well, she's none too fond of Domans, to say the least. If we take any action to hinder the safe passage of an Imperial vessel, she'll accuse us of attempting to ferment rebellion and brand us enemies of the Empire, which we can ill afford to be. Like the man said, we're all talk. And where did the Kojin stand in all this? With the winning side, of course. They're mercenaries to a fault, eager to offer their services without coercion. The Shellback could tell you more, Though something tells me he would rather not. I don't understand. If the Garleans are causing the Confederacy this much trouble, and if so many of you are Doman to begin with, why aren't you willing to fight back? <laughs> Spoken like a true friend of the Doman Liberation Front. If you're planning to rouse us with noble words and grand promises, don't bother. We all know what the Imperial Army can do. Compared to them, we're boys with boats. Besides, what ties a man may once have held to his home are forsaken upon joining the Confederacy. We look out for none but our own. Be that as it may, our livelihood is under threat, and the captain will need to decide soon whether we're to go down in a blaze of glory or bow and scrape for crumbs from the Emperor's table. All while, our friend the Viceroy continues her purge of Doma's radical elements. I believe she's holding court in one of the fishing villages, even as we speak. That she-devil! Her perfidy knows no bounds! She must be stopped! Come, let us find Soroban and put us here at once! Tell the others that these ones have paid. We all have places to be. What are we waiting for? Come, come, Sorbonne cannot have gone far. 
Though, now that I think of it, it is passing strange that he left without warning. Mayhap he did not wish to be seen with his cousin brethren. That he thought to leave us behind, but nevertheless would be prudent to turn to his ship, or at least to the Confederate encampment. Well, my friends, a thousand pardons, as you may have guessed, I was reluctant to be seen the company by my, in your company by my red brothers. Ours is a complex relationship. I pray you do not misinterpret my actions as a reflection of our alliances as a whole. You, you understand? Kami be praised. Too often, or shall us quick to judge all cogent by the deeds of one. Right then, now our business with uh, Tansui is concluded, we can traverse the Ru Ruby Sea without fear. I shall return to the ship and prepare for our departure. If you have any remaining business to conduct with the pirates, I pray you do so now. Ah, that reminds me, Essigos, would you be so kind as to inform the Confederates of our plans? The more you know of their movements, the less likely we were to be mistaken as another vessel by our comrades. Oh, you're one of the engine from the beach, leaving us already. No need to pay the tithe, like Tensu said. On the other hand, if you were to pursue your our wares and find anything of your liking, we'd be glad to sell it to you at a fair price. I'm just grabbing that for later. You have spoken with the Confederates up above, then. Excellent. If you are ready to part, we may do so at any time. All aboard. Let us be off. I shall deliver you to the fishing village of Asari. Wait. Tensby said that the Viceroy was holding court in one of the fishing villages. Did he not? Should it and Asari ch chance to be the village in question, we'd instantly find ourselves surrounded by Imperial soldiers. Make it safer to come ashore some distance away. Very well, I know just the place.
Here we are. I'm reasonably certain no one bore witness to our approach. And with this, I believe I have fulfilled the terms of our agreement. I that you have. You have my deepest thanks, Aravon. Truly, you are blessed to be to have befriended such a clever and industrious merchant. No, oh, you are much too kind, good sir. I know not where your path may lead, but I wish you the best and hope that you will you shall meet again. We arrived in Anthad. And all we need to do now is liberate Doma. Ah, yes, that. Look, daunting as it is, we do not have one th thing. Do have one thing in our favor: the element of surprise. Unlike Girabania, the Imperials don't know we're here. Admittedly, that may be t our only advantage, considering how few of us there are. Well, I expect the Doma Liberation Front would even up the odds a bit. But before all that, we would need to see see if this. It's the fishing village tents we was talking about. It may well be. I smell ceruleum in the ceruleum in the breeze. If only you knew how commonplace such scenes have become. Hmm. Are we too late? Over there, someone's coming. It is she, sworn enemy of Doma, of my master. The traitor who sold her homeland to the Garleans. Yotsuyu. The Viceroy herself. And look behind her. Isn't that... Oh, filth and squalor everywhere I look. How very dark. What I wouldn't do for a drink. Come now! You've no reason to look so afraid! You have lived through a quarter of a century of Garlean rule, remember? Tis better to bend with the wind than stand tall and be broken. Therein lies hope. Therein lies freedom. I come before you today seeking affirmation. A heartfelt declaration. You are free to answer me as you see fit, yet even the least among you should know the correct response. Should. A resident of your village, one of your neighbors, mayhap your friend, was detained by the Korjin this morning. They say he was attempting to flee to Kugane. But we both know that simply isn't true, don't we? Have you anything to say? Hm. Bit slow, this one. Is there anyone more sensible among you? Have any of you anything to say? To swear? My lady. I swear to serve the Empire, to do whatever is asked of me, and never disobey. Ah, well said, that man. Of course, it wouldn't do to simply take you at your word.
kill him. Surely you can do that much. He must be guilty of something or other, or he wouldn't have attempted to flee the Empire. I have a family. Kami, forgive me, Kami, forgive me. Very good. I've always had a soft spot for men like you. Next, I want you to shoot those two over there. Too old to work, you understand. A burden on the Empire. We can't have that. But... they're my parents! You can't expect me to... Yeah. <laughs> Totally an Elsa ghost thing. Think say. for a moment. If you go charging in now, every one of those villages is as good as dead. We must consider the wider picture. If we act recklessly, we risk alerting the Garleans to our presence here, making it that much harder for us to work with the local rebels. To say nothing of the reprisals ordinary civilians would be made to suffer. Open your eyes, girl. They are already suffering. Let me go. I am putting an end to this madness. I will approach the village alone and identify myself as a former leader of the rebellion and a known fugitive. They will wish to detain me until they are certain they have learned all I know. Use this time to make your plans. You saw what those monsters did to the villagers. Who knows what they'll do to you, assuming they don't kill you where you stand. We live and die at the pleasure of the Kami. My fate is in their hands and no others. If it be of any comfort, I am no stranger to chains. You can't expect us to stand idly by as a comrade goes marching off to his death. And this is nothing like Kugani. Nor is it like the Reach, Lise. Or the Wall. Let him go. Hold out for as long as you can, but remember, noble sacrifices are to remain an absolute last resort. I wish I could say it won't come to that, but only the gods know how we're going to get you and the others out in one piece. A miracle, perchance. A great tower stands to the north and east. Look to its occupants for aid and succor. Together, you may yet find your miracle. Now. Leave this place. I must go. Oh. Another idiot like all the rest. I'm beginning to think it may be something fundamental. Something intrinsic. Something quintessentially dormant to ignore the simple truth. You can't do a damn thing if you're dead. Enough, Yotsuyu! <laughs> well now, this is a surprise. Hear me, Yotsuyu! Cease this farce, here and now, and I shall surrender myself to you. Refuse! And all shall answer to my blade. Bring him to the tavern.
hate it as much as you, but maybe even even more. Every fiber of my being is crying out to intervene, but and what's done is done. Gosetsu's gamble has gifted us the time we need to find a solution. He bade us seek aid at the distant tower, yes? For want of better ideas, I say we do just that, while taking care to avoid the Imperials. Take a look at the Ruby Sea. Guess what I'm heading towards? Well, actually, no. Not quite. We seem to have evaded the patrol so far. What is that tower anyway? I've never seen anything like it. According to the map, we are on, on a coro, and the tower is known as Heaven High, a mysterious structure built long ago by persons unknown. Oh, gods, listen to me. I'm starting to sound like Alf now. Next thing you know, I'll be saying things like, Oh, you are doubtlessly already aware. Hmm. Over there, do you see it? Hmm, doesn't look like it's been dead long. Whoever did this, good shot. I can't see a stray, stray arrow. Well, someone's hungry. Wait, that wasn't either of you two, was it? Calm down, we have nothing to do with... Wait, what am I doing? They can't possibly understand us. Probably not, no. Time to run, Lise. We have our strength. We save our strength for any that give chase. You too, Essegos. Yeah, we water out. Just imagine if they'd taken us by surprise. That f What fine ending that would have been to our story. Anyways, I think it's safe to assume that the people at the tower know how to defend themselves. Else you'd have to. Sharing an island with these things. Things now all we need to do is convince them to help us.
No, oh, that there's a settlement here, and there's they even got their own etherite. Wait a minute, I've seen that standard before. This is that was when we met Tensui, which means this place belongs to. Oh. <laughs> It would seem we found a Confederate settlement, mayhap even their headquarters, judging by the size of the place. So Gossetsu bade us to seek out the Confederacy for aid and succor, the selfsame Confederacy that refuses to openly oppose the Empire. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained, I suppose, at the very least, we're unlikely to ask, ask us for the tithe. Hey, you know where I said I was going to play until I got to, the, to an eighth right in the area? Oh, here we go. Oh, look at it. It's tensely. So he made his way to the side of things. I'm going to tune to this, and that's it for today. Uh, possibly sometime in the next couple of days I'm going to, because I'm off for the next two days for work because of the July 4th. I get two days off, so... Uh, great. But don't forget, comes out loud uh, She's uh, you can uh, find our the videos of the, all the vods. Well, most of the vods. There were some I forgot to transfer over to YouTube, but at youtubecom slash comes out loud. Uh, yeah, storiesazzle.com slash comes out loud, and Patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud. That's it. That's it. PayPal that piece of scripts out loud. I don't know what else I'm gonna I need another 20 seconds anyways for the the the, the whole end screen thing, you know? Two things and a subscribe button. <laughs> if you ever watch the YouTube videos, you see that because that's how I set it up. Easy peasy beautiful, you know. Recommend this, recommend that, and uh, hey, you can just subscribe to the channel to get notifications when uh, I think you have to click the bell too. I don't know, something like that. Good night, kids!